Uh, but before we dive into anything, let me open us up in prayer. <clears throat> our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, first and foremost, that you are our God, that we are your people. We thank you for this, uh, this very soggy morning that you have uh, created for us by your, your sovereign hand. We pray that you would be with us in our study of the new covenant, that we would learn more of you and your divine grace and of your son, Jesus Christ, who has paid for this covenant in his blood. We pray all these things in his precious name. Amen. All right, so um, does everybody have, well, I guess pastor's still working on the handouts. Does everybody have a way to read the answer? We're going to reread the question again. I'll wait till pastor's done with the handouts. So again, we're in question 35. I'll read the question. Let's read the answer again together just so it's fresh in our minds. <clears throat> and uh, Sam specifically told me, Sam Miller, to speak up because he's listening. Uh, he's, he's out on the border this morning. So Sam, if you're listening, this is for you, brother. So how was the covenant of grace administered under the New Testament? Under the New Testament, when Christ, the substance, was exhibited... The same covenant of grace was and still is to be administered in the preaching of the word and the administration of the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper, in which grace and salvation are held forth in more fullness, evidence, and efficacy to all nations. All right, very good. So um, we are picking up in the administration of the sacraments. Last week we looked at the preaching of the word. So I'm not going to lie to you, I had to kind of fight the urge when I was writing this lecture to not really go.